So let's kick this off with a little bit of context here. Uh, I've been in what you might call something of a creative rut over the last year or so. Um, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's gotten so bad that over the last several months, I haven't even enjoyed making music. Now, I tell you this because in a blog post detailing the differences between the blooper, the mood, and the habit, Chase Bliss Audio's uh, founder, Joel Corte, brags that the habit is capable of getting anybody out of a creative rut. Now, if you have only one takeaway from this review, it should be that Joel is probably right. Now, I'm not gonna stand here and lie and say that the habit is for everyone. It's weird, complicated, and expensive. But it is also surprisingly versatile and wholly unique. It is at its core a digital delay pedal, a rather crisping clean one. And you can certainly use it that way and get great results, but you're not gonna be getting your $399 worth. Now, Chase Bliss prefers to pitch the habit as a musical sketch pad. Now, that's definitely an apt descriptor, but one that might confuse people. This isn't a looper in the traditional sense. You're not going to play a four chord progression and then noodle melodies over the top. Instead, it's more of a happy accident machine where you might stumble into something inspiring. Now, those are the two extreme use cases for the habit, though, and in the middle, there's tons of things to explore from tape-like warbles to glitchy stutters to complex multi-tap delays. Now, what makes this all possible is that inside of habit is a three-minute digital tape loop that's always recording, and then you can go apply effects, harmonize with yourself, explore what you played a minute ago, or just recreate the sound of a floor full of slot machines. Now what's impressive is that Chase Bliss manages to cram all of this versatility into a standard size guitar pedal format. A lot of that is down to the kind of standardized controls that the company puts on almost all of its pedals. You get six knobs across the top, four three-way switches, two foot switches, and then up top, the most easily identifiable part of any Chase Bliss pedal, the 16 dip switches. Now, yes, that is a lot of variables crammed into a very small space, and it can seem quite intimidating at first, but I have to give Chase Bliss a ton of credit for the manual here. It is easy to understand, fun, and dare I say beautiful, this is maybe the best product manual I've ever seen. The hardware itself is likewise a step ahead of the competition. Now, there's not a ton of ways to stand out in the pedal game if you're sticking to a standard sized metal enclosure, but Chase Bliss opts for these knurled metal knobs, and the LEDs are nestled inside these little metal calderas. They're small touches that elevate a Chase Bliss pedal above other players, but it's important when you're charging this much. Now, the two primary knocks against it on the hardware front are a lack of stereo outs and a non-standard MIDI connection. Now, frankly, I don't think the former is a major issue. I have a small handful of stereo guitar pedals, and I almost never actually use them in stereo. Uh, the MIDI port, on the other hand, is a bit of a downer, especially since quarter since eighth-inch TRS MIDI is a widely adopted standard at this point. Also, because Chase Bliss has to make room for the dip switches, all the jacks are on the sides of the pedal. Uh, it's hardly the end of the world, but connecting audio, power, and expression does eat up a little bit more real estate on your pedal board. Now, all of those things are kind of nitpicks, though, and they really don't matter once you start playing the habit. Uh, even as a relatively straightforward delay, it shines, especially once you start exploring the modifiers. Now, the modifiers are split into two banks of three, and you select them with the three-way switches in the middle. You put the middle switch to the left, and you get bank one, A, to the right, you get bank B, and in the middle, it's off. And then you select a specific modifier by using the switch on the left. And then in addition to that, there's the modify knob, which allows you to dial in the amount and style of the modifier. And this is important to note because basically every modifier has two different variations depending on which way you turn the knob. So for instance, modifier A1 is stepped speed change quantized to fifths and octaves. To the right of 12 o'clock, the repeats play forward.
and to the left of 12 o'clock, they play backwards. Other modifiers include a tape-like lo-fi effects, smooth pitch changes, and a multi-mode filter. Um, but the most interesting is probably the trimmer. So the trimmer slices bits of audio off the start or the end of a note, and it can be used to create complex stuttering rhythms. And if you crank that, you can get these heavily degraded, almost granular and metallic sounds. Now the controls across the top are what you would expect from almost any delay pedal. There's level for turning up the amount of the uh, affected signal. There's repeats or feedback, how many echoes you get. And then size, which would normally be labeled time on a standard delay pedal. The ones below that, however, are what make Habit unique. Now we've already mentioned the modify knob, but next to that are scan and spread. Now scan has two modes, auto by default, but it can also be put in manual mode by using one of those dip switches on the back, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, in auto, what it does is basically introduce random snippets of old sounds. Now the scan and spread knobs are connected, so as scan starts rummaging through the past, it drags that secondary playhead from spread with it. Now this is important because as you crank up the scan, you're making spread all the more unpredictable. Predictable. Now this can be fun if you're looking for glitchy chaos, but it can also be frustrating if you're trying to lock into a groove with yourself. Now if you set scan to manual, you're picking out the moment of your choice from the last three minutes using the scan knob. This is particularly handy if you're using habit like a musical sketch pad, since you can record three minutes of noodling and then go back and find the bit you really want to savor. Now there is a middle ground, which is my preferred method of using scan, where you press and hold the left foot switch and momentarily it sets the scan to maximum and then goes back to where you have it set when you let go. Now if you leave scan set to zero, that means you're able to insert controlled bits of chaos exactly when you want to. <laughs> Now lastly, there is this three-way switch over on the right labeled in, out, and feed. And it might be the most powerful control on the pedal. Now in the middle or out, you get a predictable sound where every echo sounds exactly the same. When the switch is set to in, each echo is fed through the modifier circuit again. This can give you sparkling chimes that climb off into infinity or echoes that crumble more and more with each repeat. Now to the right is feed mode, and that sends the entire output of the habit pedal back through the input again, giving you echoes of echoes that are fed through the modifier circuit over and over and over. Now this is where things can get really wild. You can get metallic reverb-like drones, but it also means that if you start turning knobs and changing parameters, that is imprinted to the tape loop. And when combined with collect mode, which we're getting to momentarily, uh, that is when it does come into its own as a musical sketch pad. By default, Habit's three minute internal loop is always recording, but it erases what happened three minutes ago as it circles back around. If you turn on collect, then the loop is never erased and you're able to overdub. This is where you can start building sketches of songs and then by turning on feed, record what happens as you tweak knobs and dramatically transform what you've played.
Now, I will be honest, I haven't had a lot of success building songs using this, but it's still incredibly fun and meditative to just sit there and build up a composition over several minutes doing passes of the loop. And now this method of composition is definitely best for specific genres of music. If you want to do ambient washes or kind of loping, stuttering guitar pieces, it's great. Still, what I found collect mode to be really useful for is sampling. Running an instrument into the habit and then running those results into the SP404 has been incredible fun. And by the way, that's the other big takeaway you should have here. The habit is fun. Despite its complexity and unpredictability, it's easy to get lost in the joy of creating new and bizarre sounds. Now the thing that lends the habit its greatest sense of complexity is definitely the dip switches on top. They're one of the defining features of a Chase Bliss pedal. They basically come in two flavors, expression and customization. And then as mentioned, this is also how you enable things like collect and manual scan. Now the other switches are all for expression and modulation. You'll see that there's switches for all of the different parameters on it. And if you flip those and connect an expression pedal, that gives you control over that knob from the floor. Great for doing things like increasing the number of repeats as you're playing. Um, if you don't flip any of those switches, by the way, the expression pedal by default controls the level of the effect. Also kind of handy if you just want to swell in echoes to accentuate things every so often. Now the other dip switches control expression and ramping. At its most simple, if you flip the switch, for instance, under size, and then you connect an expression pedal to the jack on the side of the pedal, you can change the size of the echoes with your foot. This is great if you want to say, you know, play longer echoes over some parts and shorter ones over others. Uh, also worth noting that if you don't flip any dip switches and you plug an expression pedal in, it controls the volume of the effects, controls the level. Uh, also useful if you want to say swell in echoes to accentuate particular parts. Now if you don't plug in an expression pedal, you have two options. There is ramp and bounce. Ramp is a single uh, cycle envelope meaning that when you turn the pedal on, it either increases or decreases the amount of a particular effect. So if you want to turn the pedal on and say start with crazy over the top, never ending echoes and have it slowly come back down to earth to a more reasonable setting, you can do that. Now, if you turn on bounce, it cycles through. It's basically an internal LFO. This lets you do things like increase the amount of a modifier over time. Or if you flip the waveform from triangle to square for bounce, that will turn particular things on and off. There's also a random option, so if you want to add a bit of unpredictability, say take advantage of those already somewhat unpredictable tape-like warbles, you can turn that on and really kind of get things messed up and all over the place. <laughs> And it's also worth noting that the uh, ramp or bounce can be in either rise or fall mode. That means that the amount of the parameter will either increase from the minimum to wherever you set the knob or decrease from the maximum to wherever you set the knob. Now, obviously, if you don't want or need all of these crazy extra features, then don't get a habit. It can do typical delay stuff, but you don't need to spend $400 on a typical delay. There are delay pedals out there that cover some of the same ground as the Habit, like uh, the Red Panda Labs Raster 2, but it doesn't really have equivalence to the scan, spread, and collect features. Those are pretty unique to Habit. Now, the more likely choice you're trying to make is probably between the Habit, Mood, and Blooper. All three are related, but their strengths lie in specific areas. The Blooper is a collaboration with YouTuber Knobs, who has, by the way, since joined the Chase Bliss team, and it is a looper. It does the things you'd expect a looper to do, record audio and play it back. What makes it unique is how you're able to mangle that audio by applying modifiers and overdubbing on yourself. 
It is probably the most complex of the three pedals. It even has a browser-based interface for exporting loop or swapping in different modifiers. The idea of a musical sketch pad probably better applies to the blooper than the habit. Now, Mood was an outgrowth of the development of Blooper. It is probably the most straightforward of the three pedals. It also has an always listening audio recorder, but it plays back micro loops and it's paired with a reverb. So if you just want airy ambient washes, granular guitar, this is probably the pedal for you. Habit on the other hand is focused on delay and free form looping. It's probably the most experimental of the bunch. Its strengths lie in creating complex rhythmic echoes and unpredictable melodic interplay. It has many of the same strengths as Blooper and Mood. It's just as at home on a pedal board being supported by other effects as it is on a desktop being treated as an instrument in and of itself. But it's also more difficult to tame. Habit is clearly chaotic neutral. Thanks for watching and for more of the latest tech news, reviews, and occasional pedal demo, stay tuned to Engadget.